trying to start a video here. I don't know if you guys can hear me. When, when, when we dream, uh, obviously we, we don't all dream the same. We don't all dream about the same things or, or uh, uh, the same way, obviously. We have different experiences and our mind will distill and make sense or nonsense of whatever happens to us during the day and we all lead different lives. But there is a structure, there is a, there is a, a certain um, context, there are guidelines, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, the way I'm trying to bring my aesthetic is uh, a little bit like that. It's a little bit like having these these uh, uh, characters that belong together. They they belong to each other. You are part of that story, that narrative. And yet, if you step back and you try to think rationally, like hold on, what what is this? What is the and you start questioning when you are awake and you don't really understand, but it makes perfect sense when, when we're dreaming, when we're sleeping, when things are happening and we don't even question. And uh, I find really interesting having these, these uh, moments of, of strangeness and discomfort. But at the same time, it's quite familiar and, and uh, it's not discomforting at all. It's, it's such a paradox. Um, and it's a paradox that makes complete sense in a dream world emotionally, but you can't explain it. And how, how do you react to that as well? You know, you exist and belong in that space. And uh, I find that uh, quite alluring, uh, quite seductive in a, in a sense. Um, and I think this is where the, the dream world structure helps me to, to uh, manipulate the, 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 the whole composition, uh, the way I, I see color, I see paint. And even in, in the, mid of the middle of the process, um, things change. Things keep keep evolving. Things keep growing, and it's like I I constantly keep dreaming uh, uh, and weaving this fabric uh, until it becomes uh, something familiar, something uh, natural. This is 2007, also uh, an aggressive perspective, um, a specific type of, of, of body, um, and I was very much interested in exploring, uh, exploring that rawness that uh, I was really into, um, uh, Lucian Freud and, and exploring that type of, of aesthetic until I came to a series of self-portraits uh, very striking in terms of, of, um, of composition and very, very simple. This is one of my favorite portraits still today. Uh, I came to these totems 
So this is like 2015, 2016. So 10 years after that first painting that I showed you. And I was exploring a way of painting someone's portrait and uh, just having different looks and perspectives and whatnot. And what I, what I was trying to explore here is I was trying to um, understand the real portrait. So getting to the real character of the person I was I was portraying by having multiple uh, multiple perspectives on on the, on the person until I decided to go to the narrative themes like the Bruce Lee Shoes series. That was the first series where I decided to really have a go at uh, the absurd narratives. And that's where everything started. After the Bruce Lee Shoes series, I went to Retro Future, where I really took in the monolithic expression that I, I've been working on for so many years, but adding this whole new uh, uh, revival, uh, this this feeling of, of going back in time and bringing especially colors, tones, and, and shapes from from a past that was quite familiar to me. So the, the type of glove, the phone. Um, so I love this painting, by the way. So from Retro Future, I moved on to Black Hats, White Hats. It became a lot more complex. It became, uh, it became a whole uh, narrative. Um, and this was the first time where I approached the theme in a way where uh, I wasn't interested in developing a, a strict opinion. The painting would survive basically upon whatever you thought about it. Sunny day, I'll make it rain, make a bird sing, any song you're gonna hit sing. Fix all your broken things. I was the devil. 